I reckon that any podcast about storytelling really ought to begin with the words, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then I begin. This podcast begins way back in 2008. I've always been a big fan of Americana or alt country music. And part of the reason for that was my fairly early introduction into the work of Steve Earle, going back to late 1989-1990. Um, Guitar Town and probably one of his most famous and most popular albums Copperhead Road sent me in the direction into that genre which I probably haven't recovered from The gig in 2008 in the Elmwood Hall in Belfast was a stopover show Steve Earle had been awarded um, he'd won some country music award in Manchester and was flying back played the Elmwood Hall for one night before he went back to the States and so he was playing a solo show by himself and when uh, I got the news, he got tickets, was kind of excited that he was playing but disappointed that it wasn't the full band but when you strip down a singer-songwriter into the bare basics of their craft you're really in for something special and Steve Earle really didn't disappoint, He he's a, you know, I I would argue that he's one of the top 10 singer-songwriters of any genre and probably one of the most influential in the country music genre, a Texan, very left-wing, who sings about uh, stuff that's fairly important to him and his audience. He's got a really, really strong connection with his audience and maybe that's, you know, more of the reason to see him play in a place like the Elmwood Hall by himself and a guitar, a mandolin and a table full of various keyed harmonicas was the background. One of the songs that he played that night is really what I want to talk about and focus on. He played a song, um, one of his many songs about the American Civil War and this song lasts for about just less than three minutes and typically with a Steve Earle song um, there's a preamble before he plays it and so he was given he was tearing up the song, he was framing it, giving it some context and explained that the song was based on a book on the American Civil War called The Killer Angels, written by Michael Shara, S-H-A-A-R-A. And he played the song afterwards and this is just a little clip of that song. It's played from my Spotify onto the podcast recording so it's not going to be perfect but here goes. It's a bluegrass track, a collaboration with the Del McCory band from the album The Mountain. And the gig continued and we all went home fairly happy and the next morning I go to Belfast. Uh, it's a Belfast that has two bookshops that are from two Waterstones bookshops. I go to the one on the Royal Avenue and I ask the lady uh, behind the counter, do you have in store Killer Angels by Michael Shara? And what she said to me was, that's really strange, you're the third person that has asked for that book this morning and it wasn't 11 o'clock. There were at least three people inspired by that preamble and song that Steve Earle uh, delivered that evening to go and buy the book. And the book became the cornerstone for the movie Gettysburg. And the song itself is all about an Irish guy who flees Ireland, persecution in Ireland in the 1800s, goes to America. And when he lands, he goes straight into conscription to the Union Army and the 20th Main Regiment under the leadership of Joshua Chamberlain. That regiment held the western flank of the Union forces on the second day of Gettysburg, where they rebuffed the charge of the Confederacy, which went on to help them win the Battle of Gettysburg and subsequently the American Civil War. So it's a pivotal moment in American history. The... The war itself lasted for about five years. Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg, I think, was maybe only two or three days, but there were really seriously heavy casualties, and it was a kind of a a really, really pivotal moment in, well, for history of America and the landscape that exists today. Steve Earle was able to talk about it in less than three minutes, plus a preamble of about two minutes. 
And I think that's really powerful storytelling. So trying to take this into what does that mean about business and brand story and what can you learn from something, somebody like Steve Earle or how to craft uh, a story that resonates and makes sense to your audience. I think one of the things you have to look at, first of all, are the existing structures of storytelling. So when I Google uh, brand storytelling to try and find out the beginning or the origin of that concept, there isn't really there isn't really a start date or a time. There is a period when it's post-advertising, I guess, when things change for businesses and they had to try harder to communicate with audiences to try and establish engagement to make the brand more memorable, differentiate from competitors. But that's what the marketing was really has really always been about from the days of four Ps now to the twenty seven Ps or whatever. And you're looking at storytelling driven by data, driven by visuals, driven by narratives. Primarily and successfully, though, built around the audience rather than the individual um, who's telling the story. So Steve Earle never talked about himself in any part of that preamble of the song. And similarly, successful brands end up not talking about themselves, but referencing the story around the needs of their customers. And that's probably the most important change. You take a look at websites, you take a look at sales pitches, um, that you have created for your for your sales team and the stuff on your website and marketing collateral, how much of what you're saying is based around you? You were established in 1997. You've been doing this for 40 years. You've been, if a team of 25 people, you're based in Belfast, but have locations across Northern Ireland. We do this for our customers. Here's examples of how we do it, et cetera, et cetera. And the focus is on you and not the customer. And what I want to talk about are some storytelling structures and methodologies that you could consider using to maybe enhance your storytelling capability and trying to refresh what it is you're saying to the world right now. The first one I want to talk about is one that um, goes back to the 1950s. It's the hero's journey or the monomyth um, that was created by a guy called uh, Joseph Campbell. A very simple yet at the same time fairly complex structure on how to tell a story. You're definitely familiar with this uh, model. Um, All you have to do is take a look at the top movies that uh, of the 2000s, 2010, 2020, um, even the movies that are in the top 10 right now, and they all have a certain format. There's always a protagonist, a guy who goes on a big adventure, um, makes friends, hits roadblocks, encounters a bad guy and comes back a changed person. And that's really what the hero's journey is in a nutshell. Um, Exchange some of those words and you've got the Batman trilogy, um, Christopher Nolan, you've got the current Batman, you have got the Avengers, you have Harry Potter, you have Indiana Jones, you have Star Wars, you have Lord of the Rings, and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And what we don't tend to see is the structure of that, but the structure of the hero's journey or the monomyth, as it's called, is really captivating and it's a successful formula that works. Now, how you can try and apply this to your business story, I'm not really sure you can, but it gives you an, an indication of what a structure looks like and how it can be repeated again and again and again. And one of the things that Steve Earle has over you is that Steve Earle has been writing songs since he was a child. So he's say 60 something, late 60s now. So he's been writing songs for 50 years and he has maybe not far off 20 albums that have been very, very successful. He has a body of work that a lot of people will be familiar with. You've got The Galway Girl, you've got Copperhead Road, Guitar Town, um, a load of songs that people would be able to recall straight away. And he has been doing this and repeating and making mistakes. So all of the songs that we know of his, at least, are probably outweighed in number by the songs that he has been So you think of the body of work that he has done. How many times have you in your lifetime written copy for your website or had copy written for your website? It's not something you do frequently. And if you even do it at all, the chances are you're going to get it outsourced to somebody else like a content writer. How often do you write your sales scripts? This monomyth and the hero's journey is replicated again and again and again by people who are writing 
uh, screenplays who are making movies based on a formula that works. Like at no point in cinematic history are there so many genres, so many of the same genre have been pumped out at the one go because it's a successful formula and the studios can't take as many risks now as they could in the past. It's an ultra competitive landscape. Netflix has come in the way movies are distributed, produced and created has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. But your marketplace is exactly the same. The marketplace that you sell and you serve to has changed dramatically and more so now than ever before, the customer has to be central to the delivery of the content. So is it worth checking your website even right now as you listen to this, if you can, and see where that sits? Your sales script, how, how has that been changed and reviewed and revised um, recently? And most likely it hasn't been. Hero's Journey, go and Google it, check it out. Um, it's worth looking at, but it's quite sophisticated and it's maybe a little bit too deep. So I'm going to suggest a few other places that you could go to that might help. There's one guy in America, a guy called Park Howell, who has created a website and uh, uh, a bank of content that would really help you in your, in your quest for a really good brand story. And it's called The Business of Story. Park has worked with a whole bunch of people, um, Coca-Cola, Dell, American Express, Home Depot, massive American brands based out of Phoenix in Arizona. He is working and collaborating with huge brands. I think he has an advertising agency background, but he has a really, really brilliant way of looking at or creating or presenting an interpretation of the hero's journey for brand. It's a trademarked story cycle system. And it has uh, a number of different stages that aren't dissimilar to the 12 stages of the hero's journey. Really worth looking out. Businessofstory.com is the website. Um, you know, I think you can even get a chat or a consultation with him. He's very accessible. The podcast I did with him way back was based on a podcast that he had recorded with a guy called Randy Olson. Um, another piece of content that I want to share with you. Randy Olson had written a book called Houston, We Have a Narrative. Randy Olson was a scientist, I believe, and was always dismayed and disappointed at the level of ambivalence towards research, scientific research documents. Essentially, these documents that had really some significance and importance in medicine and science, scientific research were being ignored by people because essentially they were being written in such a way that they were written by the author for people like the author. So he thought, how, how can this be something that's so important be ignored? And he came up with the framework of ABT, which is and, but, and therefore, which is the structure used by Lincoln in the Gettysburg Address, for example, by Martin Luther King. And as recently as 2014 and 15, the, the brand story that Donald Trump presented to America that saw him get elected. So those are two really good resources that you can fall into the business of story.com with Park Howell and uh, Randy Olson check out Randy Olson's work in Houston we have a narrative again it's quite uh, in depth and maybe at a level that you don't really feel you need to go but it, it gives you some really really good ideas on how to structure content that will be relevant to an audience you should also check out a guy called Donald Miller uh, Donald has written a book called building a story brand clarify your message so customers will listen and he has come up with the SB7 framework, which is a seven part process, which isn't dissimilar to a condensed version of the hero's journey, but it relates specifically to business and where you have a character or a hero in the story, that hero or the character is your customer, not you. So the seven stages can be broken down to a character has a problem, meets a guide who gives them a plan, gives them a call to action, helps them avoid failure, and it all ends up in a great success at the end. Those are the seven stages. Uh, I saw Dave Linton from Madlug deliver a marketing presentation based around this. It was incredible. Dave Linton is the CEO of a company called Madlug, and the acronym is MAD, which is Make a Difference, L-U-G for luggage. So he creates... Um, Backpacks, rucksacks, carrier bags, computer cases, that every time one is bought, a bag goes to a child in the foster network, foster home network. And so every time a child has to move from home to home, they have a bag that allows them to carry everything that they have with them in a dignity and with respect. 
So Dave has, has, has worked as a, a youth worker or a social worker and he saw the problem and he created Mad Look as a result of that. When he tells his story, it's arguably one of the most authentic brand stories you will hear. It has an emotional context, a, it's a very human side to it, but it's a very, very business oriented story that has created um, a product that satisfies multiple needs to a problem that maybe only a few people might have recognized in the past. And at no part of the story does Dave see Mad Lug or himself anywhere near uh, the hero. The hero is the foster child. It's a really, really brilliant piece of... Um, it, it's the best brand story that I think I've heard on this island and maybe maybe anywhere. One of the things that binds all of this together is truth. And when you look at content, the superlatives that embellish content on websites, we are the market leader, we are the best at this, we are number one. And when that content was written, you might have been number one, but if that content was written five years ago or four years ago, are you still number one? And in what chart are you number one? And what relevance does that have? And when Dave Linton talks about his company and the solution that they solve, uh, the problem that they solve. He, he talks about, he gives it context. He talks about the characters involved. He talks about the problem and he, he talks about the resolution to that problem. But in every strand of that story, there is truth, authenticity, honesty, integrity. It's real. Same with Steve Earle. Steve Earle didn't embellish that song. That song is real. Um, taking a, a fictitious character that embodies an entire nation for five years uh, during the Civil War that tells a story that everyone can relate to. It's, it's seen through the eyes of an observer, but it's truth, it's authentic. And so when you're writing your brand story or when you're considering writing a brand story or a sales pitch, the first lie that you tell will be the one that puts you the number one or the very best or market leader, unless you are without doubt the market leader. And then you have to ask yourself a question, how does that add to the story? Does it detract from the story? Um, why would I put that in? And, and the, the more authentic that you can be with the story, the greater the impact that the story will have on your customers. We work with businesses, sales teams of businesses, sometimes with, sometimes without the marketing teams. We work with business owners to try and create sales pitches that will resonate very quickly in, in, in the sales process, be that telesales, be that emails, sales letters, presentations, whatever. And it takes me back to a time when I worked in media where we often discussed the the challenges that editors face writing newspapers and it became very apparent with the success of the sun and the tabloids is that editing the sun is a much harder job than editing the sunday times despite the fact that they come from the same stable and the same publishing group if you're looking at the the, the sun and god love you if you are looking at the sun but if you are you can see that the stories are dominated by large pictures by big headlines and by relatively small amounts of text compared to the same story that might be published in a broadsheet newspaper, um, which the tabloid format, which will have two pages, which will have loads of text. Um, and ultimately, the Times version of The Sun is so that you can edit it yourself. The Sun version is off, is all punchy headlines, gives you the bare minimum that you need, but it is a well-crafted and well-edited version of the bigger story. So when we work with sales teams, what we want them to do is to be able to articulate the brand story from the very beginning. Not, not the very beginning from once upon a time or we were set up in 19 whatever. The very beginning is the creating the context and including all of the characters, the antagonist and the protagonist, the problem that they have, um, how the problem has been dealt with and what the impact of that problem is and how you understand that problem. And then you bring in the solution that you create that would be necessarily there specifically to solve that problem. And so we want the long form version of the story that will then allow us to create a, a medium form and then a short form. You can't do a short form or a medium form with, without all of the information. And sometimes well-crafted stories can be taken down to a headline, a strap line, or even a tweet. And that's the importance of storytelling, being able to tell it uh, regardless of the time allocated 
you might have a presentation and the people in the presentation will say, sorry, the meeting's been cut short. You've got five minutes. What do you go to? Um, it might be that you're on the phone trying to, to, to sell um, an appointment or the idea of an appointment and the person says, look, I'm really busy here and you've got 30 seconds. So how are you able to edit and craft that story just like Steve Earle did from a Michael Shara's book, 400 pages that he can get across in, in less than three minutes? I hope that makes sense. Um, I could go on about it, but that's not really the purpose of this system. Purpose is to give you, uh, to, to challenge the conventions of your thinking, to maybe let you take a look at the work you're doing currently, websites, content, case studies, how's it written? What what problem are you really trying to solve? Or are you, you know, is it death by search engine optimization? Are you putting in keywords and key phrases that even further dilutes your message in a in a sea of we do this and we do that and we do the other? At the at the point where your content is 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 written to satisfy uh, an algorithm or are your, is your sales pitch coherent? Is it concise? Are you able to get across your messages quickly to the right people at the right time? And if it stimulated you into thinking about things differently, then um, that's really what, what I set out to do in the podcast. I hope that makes sense. Um, maybe there's a lot to digest there. If you have any questions, please get in touch. My email is paul at shift control. .co.uk. Leave a message below um, or just interested here what your thoughts are. But I'm really grateful for your for you turning up and staying this long. So thanks for your patience and I'll get talking to you again.